I am so excited for this video. Welcome, the War Chief of Light is back with another epic video. Hi, my name's PBG. You can call me whatever tickles your pickle, I suppose. Peeves, PB, War Chief. We're good, okay? We're good regardless. Either way, I am a giant nerd. My favorite type of shows and books are the types that like make you think. Like make you challenge your morality, challenge your worldview. Um, I'm not gonna lie, that's my favorite stuff. You end up comparing it to like real life things or real life situations past present so like my favorite shows are like the Mad Men, Sopranos, Star Trek and Final Fantasy 14 fits very nicely in this niche okay and it's not just Dawn Trail. Heaven's Ward was like this where we had some religious mixed in with some political drama happening some sticking to the old ways Stormblood we're talking about war slavery and the recovery of it if it's possible and then we'll get Dontrail. And Dontrail, listen. So, three things. One, this isn't going to be a review. I've said and done that. It's all right. We're good. We're going to get over that hump. Two, this video is a spoiler warning in its entirety. We are going into detail and thought process and morality questionings about the second half. So, if you didn't play for it, you've been warned. Like, we're going into it. Okay? Now, and three, this video is discussing Solution 9, Heritage Found, and like the whole souls as a transactional thing and your livelihood. And it's so, so fucked. So fucked. We start in Heritage Found, where like everything is kind of basically explained to us, you know? People work for souls. It's like an extra bank of lives in case an accident happens or something. The world outside's dangerous, so you know, you need that stuff. You watch someone die, and like everyone's cool, collected in cucumber over that. Like, nothing happened. Yay, their life went to the cloud. Everything's above board, right? Right? God, it got so bad quick. Look at my reaction. I'm going to post a couple here so you can see it because you're going to watch the little hamster get on the wheel and be like, what? Distribution of soul cells is based on one's work evaluation to encourage exemplary... God damn. Wow. A eugenics. Somebody decides how good you are and how long you get to live. That's fucked up. Payment for services rendered. It's currency. Your ability to survive. God damn. That's gross. Everything is fucked. I mean, it's late stage capitalism meets this word, which this is going to be in this video quite a bit. And fuck, it's all fucked. Let's start with late stage capitalism because it's a bit of a concept. Stick with me here for a minute. People in this world work for their lives, quite literally. I mean, they work for souls and souls is their longevity on this world. It's their safety net. It is basically how they maintain a long life to a natural death. Okay. What's interesting, but this is a world where your job is given to you. You didn't pick it. So if you did some of the side quests, you'll see that. On the whole, what that means is if you don't work, you don't get that safety net of longevity of your life. Thing can happen and you're gone. Too bad. Everyone else has it, you don't. And we see this example when we talk to somebody who can't get into the Arcadian because it had been shut down. And I mean that we solved that problem, right? Right? Point. The point is, is that in this world, the government is choosing for you. And that's the fucked up part. Oh, this is... Hear me. Though I cannot grant you a soul, 
I mean it when I say I want you to live. That doesn't help. I will always be willing to lend an ear. I fucking hate this. And she gave a, I'm sure it'll be okay and you'll find happiness. No, no, we actually don't. So in this world, what happens if you can't work? What happens if you're disabled? Sick. You don't get souls. You don't get the promise of longevity. You're disproportionately at a higher risk of not surviving. This stuff actually happens in late stage capitalism and it's happening in our own world today. I'm not gonna get into the politics of this, okay, at all. Not even a little bit. I'm Canadian for context. But I know of a country whose healthcare is 100% based on their currency and economy. I know a country that if you can't afford healthcare, you either go without, you avoid going to the doctor, or you get zero preventative care. I think know of a country that should you want preventative healthcare, you should find a good job. They'll help pay for that with insurances and whatever the case may be. Think of like a souls bank. So that means disabled people. That means people that can't work. That means people that can't get a big job because they were disproportionately unable to get into a good college or university, whatever, don't have the safety net of preventative health care. That means that these people are disproportionately at risk and absolutely do not have better outcomes. Outcomes being, you know, that's the reality. Rich people fare better because they can afford the health care. Your work or people that have good jobs disproportionately do better because they have access to good health care. This is essentially what is happening with the soul system in Solution 9. Your job is your life quite fucking literally. We took out the, the symbolism here. Lo job equal life. Too bad. Can't work? Well, that's you problem. Your job gets shut down? We'll talk to you nice about it, but I mean, that's still not my problem, right? I'm sorry it happened. I hope you find something. On the bright side, when you die, nobody will be sad. Right? I mean, like, at least there's that. So you weren't able to get a good job. You weren't able to get extra life. Something did happen. You ended up dying and nobody cares. Everything's good. Everyone's happy. Isn't that a great society? That's end stage capitalism. The only difference in this system is that it's not being upheld by corporations. It's being upheld by monarchy. Which has its own problems. But other people are happy. Who cares? Now, I promise you this has something to do with this word. This word on the screen. This word I cannot say because YouTube has a hard on to hate it. Which, let's be honest, we should be discussing more stuff like that. What happens to the sick and the disabled? The world is dangerous. They're at higher risk of passing away. The sick doesn't get second and third chances. They're sick. They're not going to get the help that they need. They will pass away early. Eventually, that means that the young and healthy that can work will live much longer, creating a situation where stuff like this is what keeps the races going. This is a model that is designed for the strong and the healthy to survive the longest, thus reproducing. And spoiler alert, it makes that word. Okay. Now this situation is a lot less obvious than Bakul Jaja, which listen, I'm gonna make my own video on that because that is so fucked in so many ways that one, I even called it, but two, it's not gonna stop. Th that is a hard thing to kill, I'm sorry to say, and it's not gonna stop. I'm willing to bet a cookie on that. And I wanna make this clear. You can tell a lot by the government or the monarchy by how they treat their sick and their disabled. And whether you want to take that sentence and apply it to real life, which I think you should, of your own situations and countries, 
that's on you. And while we're talking about governments and monarchies, let's talk about propaganda. Again, this video is full of the fucked up fuckiness, okay? Because there's tons of it in this, and people are forced to wear the headgear. Peeps. No one is forced to wear the headgear. Everyone has the choice of wearing the headgear. Obviously, peeps, they even said it. Some of the people even don't wear it. How many don't? Better yet, how many don't that are not actively against Zerulja or Sphine or the system in itself? Not very many. Only really the people you talk with. Everyone else is wearing their headgear without an issue. Why is that? Well, two things. And one is the illusion of choice. You can totally not wear it. One, you live in a dangerous place. You are at risk. Your longevity is at risk. You cannot wear it. You absolutely could not wear it. So, what do you get if you put the headgear on? One, should something happen to you that is natural and causes, you are promised to the cloud. You will live eternally happy. Two, you are promised longevity. Should you work for it, you will get longevity. If something happens, hit by a car, God knows, you are fine. Everything's great. Your family, happy. Two, you will never experience grief. No one around you has experienced grief. You don't have to. I need you to understand that when you hear those two options, you can be like, hey, I hear something funny. I don't agree. Fine. Understand what the characters who hire the headgear had to do to make this decision. There's only two sets of population, the people that are from there and the people that got absorbed into it when the stars or whatever joined or, you know. So one, you were born there. That means for generations, your parents wore it, your grandparents wore it, your friends wore it, your teachers wore it, everybody wore it. Everybody has experienced that longevity. Nobody has experienced grief in fucking generations, hundreds of years. You were brought up telling you, don't take it off. No, you can't. It's your longevity. That's your safety net. Like, mom and dad wears it, obviously. You need to wear it, too. What happened to grandma? I'm sure you had one. It was great. Everything's good. Fine. So, when kids are indoctrinated in that way, of course they are to believe that this headgear is so important, right? They don't have any other choice. That's the only thing they've ever taught. And secondly, the group that was absorbed have not been there for 10 minutes. They've been there for 30 fucking years. That's a long time to change your mind. Everyone around you is wearing it. Everyone can hunt and can provide, do their work without issue, without the safety net. Everything was good. You have to be cautious. Everyone around you is telling, asking you, why don't you wear yours? I mean, obviously, why wouldn't you want that longevity? After seeing or experiencing some grief, maybe you lost your mother. I'm gonna, I, I have a thing that can help you with that. Like, you'll never have to experience that feeling again. And remember, you're part of a hive now. Your community wears one. You don't. You're the oddball out. And again, we're talking time here. Maybe for the first 10 years you didn't wear it. And then a situation happens and you change your mind. Maybe for the first 15 years you don't wear it. But finally the pressure of the society got to you. Maybe a close call when you're out gathering or gardening shit happened. And that changed your mind. The reality is, is that this is what's shown to you every day. That is an illusion of choice in the end. And for propaganda, my favorite favorite piece of propaganda is the Arcadian. This is your entertainment. This is for you, the fans. It's great. You get to watch people fight immense monsters to the death. And then later, you get to see them outside the Arcadian, get their autograph, you get to stand with them, maybe take a picture. Everything's great. Oh, they're so nice. And we give the winners these like great living after that because they so deserve it. The champions and everything. It's just great, isn't it? Propaganda, baby. That's what propaganda is. We just told you how valuable 
those headgear pieces are. We told, we just told you how amazing those headgear pieces are. And we told you that the people that use it the most will end up having a great life. I'm gonna leave you with a quote. You're gonna have to Google this one. I'm not putting that in this video. No mail. The only good propaganda is the propaganda that works. And the Arcadian is a giant poster board for propaganda. It is all so, so fucked. And I haven't even talked about Galulja yet. And listen, like, that is a subject for a whole entire video. That actually, through history, is my Roman Empire. So that's going to be a conversation. In the patches, if it goes the way I think it will, we'll be dealing with civil war. And... Galulja will be a big reason for it. It's all... Do you see why I like this stuff? I like that deeper thing that, oh my god, like the... I like it very much. And this is why I like Dawn Trail as much as I did. It really sat on the, like, think deeper. And I know it's not for everybody. That's not the point of this video. But it is so... Let me know what you thought of these zones, these situations, even this, like, the soul transaction in general, because that sat with me. In the meantime, though, thank you so much for being here. Have a legendary night, and I can't wait to see you guys again on the next one. Either Bakul Jaja or Galulja, because both are so fucked. That's how this video is going to end up getting summarized, ain't it? It's all so fucked. Either way, have a great day. Bye. The transaction with the guy, with this thing, at the very end, with the Arcadian. That's what, that's what pushed me over the edge, and I'm like, this is so gone. This is bad, guys. In the best way possible.